Hey everybody, it's Nicole. Welcome back. Today we are going to be reviewing a set that I have waited far too long to get to, and that is the Avengers Quinjet. So the first Avengers movie did come out in 2012, which means that it's been over 10 years since we have gotten an accurate looking Quinjet. This set does come with some seriously amazing minifigures. I think all of them are new in one way or another and they look absolutely amazing. So I definitely can't wait to show you guys how they look. On the back of the box right here, you can see that it does show you just some different features that this set has. And you can see it even comes with its own display stand, which is so exciting. I love it when Lego does stuff like that. It just makes the displayability so much better. I have to buy display stands for everything. It's awful. So I'm very excited about that feature for this set as well. Of course, most notably, one of the coolest things that this set has to offer is that you can pick which design you want for your Quinjet. You can go with either the shield stickers, which obviously are the ones that I went for on mine, or you can go with the Avengers stickers. So it is really cool that they do give you that option, but personally, I really like the shield stickers. I think it's so much more interesting. It's more accurate for another thing, but I just love the way that it looks. It's extremely clean. And from what I understand, most people have decided to opt for the shield stickers. Unfortunately, this set, it does come with most of the Avengers, not all of them, and I think that a big, big mistake, especially given the fact that you can go for the shield design for the Quinjet, is that you don't get Phil Coulson. So that is quite unfortunate. Hopefully we'll get him in another set sometime soon. I don't know about that, but that would be really great and I would definitely just pluck him from there and put him in my Quinjet. But without further ado, I am really excited to get into this review and of course, take a look at those minifigures. So let's go ahead and get started. So I will start off here with our Star Spangled Man with a plan. We do have Steve Rogers slash Captain America looking really good in that new torso printing. I really, really like the look of the different shades of blue and the star on his chest. And the back's looking good as well. I also do really like the shield used in this set. However, one thing that I really, really dislike about Captain America minifigures are the helmet pieces. This like mask helmet piece, I think it's too big. I don't know if you can tell, but I've actually pushed mine up. I just think that when it's all the way down, it covers far too much of his mouth and it looks really bizarre because that's not at all how it fits on his face in the films. So I do just kind of hover mine a little bit above where his mouth is. And I don't think that it looks any less accurate. It probably looks a little better in my opinion. Two face printings for this minifigure, but I prefer the action ones in this set, of course. And again, I kind of hover my mask piece for him just a little bit above where it's supposed to sit because I just like it better when his mouth is not covered. Next here we have Loki, who I can confidently say is my favorite favorite minifigure in this set. He looks so cool. If you did notice, his helmet piece is a new color of gold. It's that metallic gold, so it's literally shining. Such a perfect move. Thank you for doing that, Lego. It looks a million times better. He does come with his staff, but I guess there's no Tesseract in it because there is no blue. I think he also has the best torso and leg printing. Just the way that it smoothly continues on from his chest to like the middle piece there and to his legs, it looks so good. I think by far the most impressive figure in this set. He does also come with a little bit of back printing. And if we remove his helmet, you can see my favorite face printing for him where he has this this muzzle over his mouth to kind of prevent him from, I don't know, casting a spell or something. He also comes with his hair piece in this set. So if you have him arrested, have that mouthpiece on him and the handcuffs that are also included in this set, then I guess you have officially arrested Loki. And I just think he's a fantastic figure. Next up, we have Black Widow or Natasha Romanoff, and she does come with a pair of her batons, which is really nice to have her at least with some sort of weapon in this set. I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that she doesn't have leg printing, to be honest, but one thing I do really like is that she does come with some really nice arm printing. You can see that shield logo on the side, also visible on the other side here, and I really do like that. However, I really dislike this hair piece for her. I think the face printing is fine, but her hair, has it ever swooped out that way? I mean, surely we could at least for a character that we have printed so many times, just get her a proper hair piece, please. You can see her second face printing on that side. She's not a 10 out of 10 figure in this set, but I do like the torso printing as well as the arm printing on her. Next up, we have Thor also looking really fantastic in this set. I really love this figure as well. 
Some pretty simple back printing for him, but he does come with his hammer Mjolnir, as well as a lightning bolt, which I love to display him just on top of the Quinjet, sort of replicating that scene in the first Avengers movie when he does cause that big thunderstorm, and then they have that big, like, meeting encounter. It's such a good scene. I love that movie. I've really got to rewatch that. I also love his lightning eyes. Kind of hard to see with the sliding. There you go. You can see that blue peeking through. Just totally filled to the brim with electricity. Again, good torso printing on him, and if you turn him around, then he just has his normal Thor. I think that's bro Thor face, but I definitely like this more in-action look for him. So again, one of the winners in this set. Finally, here we have Tony Stark, and as you can see, I'm holding him because he does come with this really cool stand so that you can clip him onto the Quinja. I will show you later, and you can kind of give him the effect of flying. So this is a really, really great minifigure for him. I think this is Iron Man Mark 7, an updated version that we haven't seen since we haven't gotten him in about 10 years, but it's really beautiful printing for him. I absolutely love it. I'm also a big fan of this version of the Iron Man helmet possibly also appears on that Mark V if memory serves. It's just such a seamless design in the way that it works and how easily and flawlessly you can just open it up and kind of have him in there. We've got that blue face on, which means he is talking to Jarvis. And if you turn it around, then Tony does also have just his normal Tony Stark face. Luckily, he does also come with a hairpiece. There's the Tony hair. So very cool to have that for him as well. But I certainly have him flying around my Quinjet, so... He keeps the helmet on. He keeps these thrusters on. Such a good looking figure. So now looking at the actual Quinjet itself, whew, you guys, they kind of nailed it. There's one, one thing that I'm gonna point out to you guys that I did notice when doing my little comparison shots. One thing stands out to me as just weird. <laughs> but other than that, I really think that this is a beautiful design. Look at this ship. It's just stunning. I'm really, really so happy that we have a more accurate looking Quinjet. Not to mention the fact that, again, you can choose whether you want it to be S.H.I.E.L.D. or Avengers based on those stickers. So just like a quick, we'll give you a 360 so you can see just what it looks like. If you did notice, here is the stand underneath. There's actually nothing really to show. That's kind of exactly what it looks like. Well, I'll do it anyway. You can see this nice little convenient spot for you to stick the stand into. And I literally have no fear that that's going to fall off. It is very, very stable. Again, absolutely love that that is included in this set. So you can see everything. You can see the cockpit, the middle of the ship, the wings, repulsor engines back here. There's the back of the ship. You can see that we have some wheels that do fold up nicely in there. And again, some nice stickers all over. You have the shield stickers on both sides. Have a couple details in the wings there. Maybe some sort of lever or something for you to pull. Just some more detailing there. Your typical red lights that do blink when you're on any sort of flight. There's a shield sticker on the top here and the area that is most problematic for me. Here on these back wings, a nice caution sticker. And what I did like is that these stickers do replicate what the ship actually looks like. They're not just thrown on there aimlessly. And they're pretty parallel, so it's the same thing on the other side. So now starting off in the cockpit area, it's a really interesting way that this opens up. You just open up the front piece, which can be a little difficult to grab. And it actually leaves these two transparent pieces on the side, which I really like. I think that it gives it a much better rounded view. And I kind of hope that I see that more in some of these Star Wars sets, to be honest. It's just a really good look. And on the interior there, you can see just lots of buttons, panels, things for pushing and pulling, and space for two minifigures to sit. The obvious choice in the front here being Natasha. She looks amazing in there. You can't fit your second figure, but sadly it will not be Barton because he is not included in this set. I also think that with these two window panels on the side, you still have ample room to like remove a minifigure, add a couple in there. They definitely don't hinder the process and they're not going anywhere, so it's good that they don't. So now I'll just close that back up. Now moving on to the wings here. One thing I thought was kind of interesting is that this piece moves up and down. I'm not sure why. I think this is more of its natural position. I like to kind of have it at least covering up this one like red brick peeking out, although maybe it is supposed to kind of show through the side. This tan one, on the other hand, I literally, I don't understand why it was used. I don't believe it had to be, and it sticks out too much for my liking. It's like right there on the front, like when you're displaying it. It's something like that. So you just see this big tan piece, and I really dislike that. And then again, going back to these wings, you can bend these 
I suppose, pose them to your liking, but their natural position is like, I don't know, 45 degrees, maybe a little less, something like that. So now to the problem area. I do really like the half shield sticker here that is accurate to the films. Again, I'll show you this picture so you can see that that is exactly what it's supposed to look like. But you will also notice that there beneath the sticker, or beneath the printed shield logo, is a propeller, a big fan piece, and it's not here. Instead, we have this interesting repulsor dish engine piece. If you look underneath, you can see this is what it looks like, probably some Tony Stark technology. And it is really cool that that's used. And I guess I think they were trying to find a substitute because putting a actual propeller on the inside may have been difficult. However, I feel like there's lots of room to kind of find a way to fit one in some sort of layer there. And I would not have been upset with a slightly chunkier wing just in order to have that propeller on the inside. I'd be really interested to see if someone finds a way to make that work. I would have preferred that for the ship, but instead we do have these dish repulsor engines. But another cool feature with this set is that you can open the entire top part of it just like this. And there's so much seating! Man, you have to appreciate when they put enough seating for your minifigures in there. Six chairs in the back, two in the front cockpit. So you're talking at least eight minifigures having a seat, not to mention the fact that normally you got one or two standing in the back. So surely we could have thrown Barton, Banner, and Coulson in here, you guys. That, you know, it is what it is. So now looking at the back, you have a couple more of these little wings. You have these turbine engines, which I really like that you can actually turn them. And another cool thing, you can lower this back ramp. Let's go ahead and remove this once more. You can see how nicely the wheels tuck into the side there. There's like this nice rectangle space and these do twist around. So you just make sure that they're at the right angle for that. And they tuck very nicely just right inside. They clip right into place, but we are going to lower them for now. So you can see what this looks like when it is docked. There's two on either side. You have one in the middle here. And there you go. Quinjet has landed. Yes, it does roll. So if we do look onto the back here, one have to appreciate the fact that this set both comes with landing gear and looks amazing when it's on the ground and a stand. Like that is some serious love and attention that this set got and I really have to appreciate that. So if we lower the back here all the way to the ground, very nice, minifigures can walk on up in there. I'll give you a little bit more of a peek into the back. This one's a little bit of a toughie. Yeah, definitely hard to get it to focus. But on the right side here, we do have handcuffs. There is a walkie talkie in the back. Can see a pair of binoculars on the left and behind that is a wrench. That's all that this has to offer in the back. But I really, really dislike how it's exposed on this side. I would have much rather preferred to have it smoothed off. So like have it displayed this way on the outside, have much more of these plates just kind of clean it off instead of having it exposed. It's just not my style for any sort of ship. Never been a fan of that. But again, if we do kind of roll up this landing gear, man, I just love how nice and easy that is done, how seamlessly it works. Don't worry, this is a clip, it can go right back on. So one final really, really great feature in this set is just like in the film, you can have Natasha Romanoff piloting the Quinjet. We have Loki down here surrounded by the Avengers. And so in the final attempt to arrest him, Natasha drops this cannon. It's aimed down at Loki without dropping Iron Man. Quinjet is kind of hovering above the crowd and we arrest him. So I really love that cannon feature. It looks really, really good. And of course, as previously mentioned, we can also attach Iron Man just onto the Quinjet by using his really, really cool thrusters piece. And we get his second hand thruster in and we can just stick him on any old place will do. There we go, he's kind of upside down. But yep, you get the idea. You can have him flying alongside the Avengers. I'm sure we can find a better place. Bit of a toughie, but I would certainly like to have him just kind of shooting out from the top of the Quinjet there. But anyway, that is the entirety of this review. Again, I am a big, big fan of this set. I think that they practically nailed it. This is certainly gonna be a lot of people's day one favorite, possibly the set of the year for some Marvel fans. Do be sure to comment down below if that is the case for you. And of course, what else are your thoughts on this set? Are you also bummed that Coulson was not included? And what stickers will you be using for your Quinjet? 
on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you are new here. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.